since fuel requires both oxygen and ignition temperature in order to burn the extinguishment of fire can be accomplished in two ways one by restricting or cutting off the supply of oxygen or two by reducing the temperature below the ignition point the principle of extinguishment usually referred to as smothering a fire is simply the act of restricting or cutting off the oxygen supply extinguishment with the use of carbon dioxide is based upon the smothering principle Portable carbon dioxide apparatus provides a quick and convenient method of excluding oxygen from a burning area. The action of carbon dioxide on the fire can be shown more clearly by filling an open container with the inert gas and pouring it over a flame. Being heavier than air, the carbon dioxide smothers the fire by displacing the oxygen at the base of the flame, leaving a blanket that prevents air from mixing with the fuel vapors. The value of this type of portable extinguisher is the speed and ease of operation it provides. It is most useful in confined spaces for extinguishing incipient fires or holding them in check until additional equipment arrives. Carbon dioxide is particularly valuable in extinguishing fires in electrical equipment and machinery. For the inert gas is a non-conductor of electricity and since it leaves no residue, will not damage critical equipment. Large oil and gasoline fires can also be extinguished by the smothering principle. But with large fires involving liquids, Foam should be used as the smothering agent. Here, foam is being applied to a tank of burning fuel oil. Notice that the foam is not being poured into the oil. The stream is directed at the opposite wall of the tank and caused to flow gently over the surface of the oil, providing a thick blanket of foam that prevents the oil vapors from mixing with oxygen. Extinguishment of the fire is not complete until the entire surface of the oil is heavily blanketed. Any disturbance or breaking up of the foam blanket will cause a reflash. For until the area has been cooled, heated vapors that escape through crevices or gaps in the foam blanket are free to mix with oxygen and reignite. This small-scale laboratory demonstration clearly shows the smothering effect of foam. Foam as an extinguishing agent is particularly valuable in fighting hot, inaccessible oil fires such as may occur in fire rooms and bilges. For a stream of foam can always be applied through a hatch or a small opening cut through the deck. The stream, however, must be directed against an unobstructed bulkhead or other place from which it will flow gently to the burning surface. Due to its light weight and consistency, foam flows easily on the surface of the liquid and surrounds any obstruction in its path. But the speed of application is important, for while foam possesses an insulating quality, when subjected to heat for a considerable period of time, it tends to harden, crack, and fry off, releasing vapors 
which will reignite. Whenever foam is used, it should be applied quickly and in sufficient quantity to provide a thick, solid blanket over the entire surface of the liquid. Only then will extinguishment be complete and reignition prevented. Steam smothering systems are installed in the machinery spaces of most steam propelled vessels. They too operate on the principle of extinguishing fire by displacing oxygen. When steam is admitted into a confined space under pressure, the inert blanket provided by the steam displaces the oxygen at the surface of the burning oil, smothering the fire. Steam smothering, however, must be used in a confined space, and its effectiveness is limited to oil and liquid fires. When used on materials other than liquids, steam will extinguish the flames surrounding the exposed surface of the materials. But sufficient oxygen will remain entrapped in the mass to sustain combustion. The deep-seated portions of the fire will continue to smolder and burn. When the steam is dissipated and additional oxygen is drawn into the space, active combustion will reoccur. The second method of extinguishment is the reduction of temperature below the ignition point. Water has long been used for this purpose but its effect upon fire is not generally understood. A solid stream of water will not extinguish an oil fire. Yet the same amount of water in the form of a fine spray or mist will extinguish it quickly. The principle involved is, mainly, the rate at which the surface is cooled. A solid stream of water directed at a hot plate produces only a small amount of steam, indicating that only a small area is being cooled. But the same amount of water finely diffused produces a considerable amount of steam, indicating that a large area is being cooled by the water. This principle of temperature reduction is used today to control and extinguish all types of fires. This tank of burning fuel oil, for instance, is brought under control quickly and easily with the use of water in the form of fog. When the finely divided particles of water reduce the heated area below the ignition temperature of the oil, the fire is immediately extinguished. Fog also produces a smothering effect that aids extinguishment. As the tiny particles of water reach the flame, a steam blanket is produced that smothers the unburned vapors, preventing them from mixing with oxygen. Before extinguishment is complete, however, the entire area must be cooled below the ignition temperature of the oil to prevent the vapors from reflashing. The heat absorbing qualities of fog also afford the fire party adequate protection in entering a burning compartment or passageway. For when the spread of the water particles spans the width of the burning area, it acts as an effective water curtain. The use of fog even makes it possible to attack fires from the lee side. Here, with the use of two fog nozzles, the fire party moves through the flame area to extinguish the fire at its source.
Reducing the temperature below the ignition point of the fuel is an effective method of combating all types of fires. But to produce fog effective enough to combat fires involving gasoline or the more volatile light oils, approximately 100 pounds pressure is required. While the cooling principle can be employed in extinguishing all fires, some fuels burn more persistently than others. Materials such as bedding, cork, wood, hemp, and nearly all types of stores must be soaked thoroughly for complete extinguishment. Fires involving these materials may be attacked with fog to protect the fire party. The fog will also cool the general area of the fire by knocking down the flames. But a solid stream of water should then be employed to penetrate the burning material. Besides having a low ignition point, a mass of fibrous materials will retain sufficient oxygen to sustain combustion beneath the surface of the burning mass. Unless thoroughly saturated, the deep-seated portions will continue to smolder and burn. The heat will accumulate, build up additional vapors, and reflash. Immersion in water of all smoldering and charred portions is the only thorough method of reducing the temperature of these materials below their ignition point. The principle of using a cooling agent to reduce temperatures below the ignition point of the material also applies to powder and ammunition. In an open space, this grain of smokeless powder burns very much like any other fuel. There is but one important difference. Powder contains its own oxygen. Therefore, it burns more rapidly than other fuels. So rapidly, in fact, that when confined, it explodes. The effect of a cooling agent on powder may be illustrated with a grain of powder on the left. It is packed in dry ice, and while it can be ignited at the top, the cooling effect of the dry ice is evident. The flame burns feebly, then dies out. When ready ammunition is in the vicinity of a fire, it can be kept from detonating by cooling with fog. When magazines are threatened, they should be immediately sprinkled and flooded. While all shipboard fires resulting from enemy action cannot be prevented, they can be controlled and extinguished. To this end, a thorough knowledge of the nature of fire is of vital importance to all shipboard personnel. For with that knowledge, shipboard fires can be isolated, controlled, and extinguished. A fire in one compartment can be confined to that compartment by cooling bulkheads and decks of adjoining compartments, by removing fuels before they vaporize, and keeping bulkheads and decks below the ignition temperatures of the fuels, by diligently inspecting all compartments in the fire area for the presence of abnormal heat. Fire cannot occur unless all three elements of the fire triangle are brought together. Fuel in the form of vapor, oxygen, and ignition temperature. Therefore, the control and extinguishment of fire can be accomplished in two ways. One, by cutting off the supply of oxygen through the use of foam or carbon dioxide. Or two, by reducing the temperature of materials below their ignition point through the use of water. It should be remembered, however, 
that carbon dioxide should be used whenever possible on electrical and machinery fires and that it is most effective in a confined space on small fires involving gasoline, oil, and other inflammable liquids. On all large fires involving inflammable liquids, foam should be employed, and the foam should be used in sufficient quantities to supply quickly a thick, solid blanket over the entire surface to prevent reignition. In extinguishing fires by cooling, water in the form of fog should always be used on gasoline, oil, and other inflammable liquids. Fog should also be used for cooling bulkheads, decks, and ammunition to prevent ignition, and for knocking down the heat and surface flames of fires involving non-liquid substances. But to penetrate the surface of these materials, a solid stream should always be used to ensure thorough and complete extinguishment. While it is often said that no two fires are alike, the principles of extinguishment shown in this film can be applied successfully to all fires. For it is upon these principles that all firefighting techniques are based.